I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making braised lamb shanks. Lamb shanks are a super tough cut of meat, and we need to treat them a certain way in order to make them tender. And what we're gonna do today is braise them. Braising is cooking low and slow in a moist heat environment. Now I wanted this recipe to be kind of a basic recipe where you can take away or add as you get more experience with the whole braising thing, right? Um, for example, when I worked in Manhattan, when I was a cook, we used to take these and cook them with cinnamon and cardamom um, and serve them with couscous. So we kind of did this North African flair to them, but they are a beautiful cut of meat that kind of lends itself to a lot of different, uh, a lot of different flavors. And this is what you're going to need for my basic lamb shank braise. Onions, red wine, lamb shanks, rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, a little bit of anchovy, some garlic, tomato paste, olive oil, carrots, and chicken stock. Let's talk about the lamb shanks really quick. These are lamb four shanks, which means they're from the front of the animal. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference between the front shanks and the back shanks. The back shanks are a little meatier, have a little more meat on them. Uh, the four shanks are a little less meatier. I like the four shanks because they have a lot of connective tissue. They have this really great flavor to them. I'm gonna use red wine for this. Red wine has a lot of acidity. It has some tannins. The lamb is pretty strong and the red wine is gonna uh, accent that and uh, kind of cut down on, on the, uh, that strong lamb flavor a little. Anchovies with lamb. Now, I have uh, one of the people I used to work with always said that anchovies make lamb a little bit better. I like to add just a little bit of anchovy to this, right? The lamb is gamey and kind of has like this really nice earthy flavor and I feel like the anchovy anchovies give it a little kick. You don't have to use the anchovy if it throws you off, but I like it. Before we start cooking the lamb, I want to get my prep done, and that's gonna be vegetables, anchovies, and herbs, all right? Uh, first thing I wanna do is with my herbs, I have a piece of butcher's twine, and I'm just gonna make a little bouquet garni, right? A bouquet garni just, just means we're gonna take our herbs and tie them up so that they don't get um, kind of lost in the braise, right? We tie them up so that uh, they're easy to fish out. And I just tie it with some butcher twine. I have a bay leaf. I have a little bit of rosemary and I have a little bit of thyme in there. Gives us flavor. Um, and it's something kind of very standard to French classical cooking. Because I'm gonna serve the sauce with all the vegetables in it, I'm just gonna cut them a little on the large side. So for my onions, I'm basically just going to cut them in eighths. I want nice big chunks of onions. I want them to be part of kind of the eating experience. So I'm gonna cut them and leave them fairly large. So whenever you braise, um, depending on how long things cook is basically how you prep your vegetables, right? And if you want them to be whole in the end or have some texture, you need to cut them a little larger. Same thing with my carrots. I'm not gonna go too crazy, but I'm gonna kind of just cut my carrots in nice big chunks. And these will get super soft and give me some good flavor, but they won't melt away and, and become mush, right? I want them to have some texture in the finished braid. Uh, same thing goes for the garlic. I'm just gonna, oop, caught it. Can I get it? Oh, got it right here. For the garlic, I'm just going to do like big slices. I wanna see the garlic. I wanna taste the garlic. I like to do things rustic. I think by now most of everyone out there knows that I like to cook rustic. And then last but not least, I have a little bowl here. I'm gonna get maybe like four or five little anchovy fillets and I'm just gonna chop it up. This will melt away and just give us a little background flavor. You will not taste anchovy, I promise, but it'll help uh, prop up that lamb flavor. Let's season our lamb shanks. I'm gonna just do salt and pepper and I'm gonna go fairly heavy. Get salt pepper all over. Okay, give them a turn. Season them fairly heavy. Don't be shy. Now let's pull the burner over and start browning these. To start the cooking process, we're gonna brown off our lamb shanks. And like a, any braise, uh, especially a brown braise, you want this to kind of be the first layer of flavor, all right? Brown equals caramelized equals delicious. So, olive oil in the bottom of my pot. And 
and we're going to put them into the pot. And we're just going to leave them be and let them brown. Don't move them around. We'll move them around in a few minutes. We want them to get nice and brown on all sides. All right, as they get brown, I'm going to turn them. That's a nice golden brown. I kind of lean them on each other because they're not going to stand on their own. And I let them go on that side. So I'm just going to kind of roll them around the pan so they get brown on all sides. So just keep on turning them and so we get nice and brown on all sides. All right, let's turn it one more time. And again, I'll kind of stand them up next to each other so they support each other. If you look in the bottom of the pot, we have some little brown bits. That's called Fond, F-O-N-D. And that's kind of our first layer of flavor. This is going to be a very like deep, rich sauce. And the browning of the meat starts that kind of nice richness, all right? Let's take these out, put them aside. You can see in the bottom of my pan, there's some brown bits. Just make sure they're not burnt. None of these are burnt. There's fat in there. I'm gonna use that fat to cook my vegetables. Lamb is out, I'm gonna add my onions. Now if you want, you can get fresh fat in there. I like to have some of that lamb fat in there. And the onions are cut big because I really don't want them to melt totally away. Just break them up a little, lightly brown. As with a lot of braises, you could easily just dump everything into the pot and let it cook for a long time. Throw it in the crock pot, turn it on and let it go. But browning the meat, browning the onions and the vegetables, adding red wine is what gives us that nice kind of deep rich flavor, right? So onions starting to get brown. I'm gonna add my garlic. And I'm gonna also add my anchovy now. The anchovy will pretty much just dissipate and melt. But it smells, oh, it smells so good. Add our carrot. And the carrot, not even gonna really cook it right now. I'm just gonna get maybe a little color on it. But it already smells so rich, right? After that, I'm gonna add my tomato paste. Tomato paste is gonna give us not only some color, it'll give us some richness as well. Uh, it'll also give us a little thickening power on uh, when we, you know, go to make the finished sauce. But I'm going to coat all my vegetables with it. You can see I'm getting kind of a nice fond in the bottom of the pan. All right. The next step is to add our wine. And what our wine is going to do is going to deglaze all those bits up. It's going to take the liquid from the wine is going to take all those little brown bits off of the bottom of the pan, put them into our stew. It's going to give us some acidity and it's going to kind of give us some earthiness. And I'm probably using for two shanks about a half a bottle. And now all I'm going to do with this is let it cook until I can't smell alcohol, right? I don't want that raw alcohol flavor in here. So I'm just going to let this kind of lightly simmer until I cannot smell alcohol anymore. We're going to reduce. Reduction equals flavor. The wine has reduced and is starting to get a little thick. The alcohol smell is away. I'm going to add my chicken stock. Again, make sure you get it everywhere because that's my deal. I'm going to add my bouquet garni and I'm going to add my lamb shanks, right? If there's any juices that come off our lamb shanks, make sure that they go into the pot, right? Now the key here is that these don't need to be completely submerged, right? Completely submerged, it would be a stew. This is going to be a braise. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna let this come up, simmer, and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. Now is also a good time to season everything up, right? We seasoned our shanks, but we didn't season our stock. Don't be afraid to season well here, right? Black pepper, I have a little in my holster there. Don't go too crazy, I guess, because it will reduce a little, but you want to give some nice kind of like good seasoning on this. I'm going to turn the heat up and we'll let this come to a simmer. The lamb shanks have started to simmer, right? It's almost time to go in the oven. One thing I'm going to do before I do that is just kind of skim off some of this scum. And usually what that is, is that's just kind of protein and fat. Um, it really doesn't add to our finished dish. Whenever I do a braise, 
uh, there's a couple of things that I want to remember, right? First of all, if you're going to put it in the oven, cook it in the oven, you always need to bring it to a simmer or a boil first. If you put it in the oven and everything's cold, it's gonna take forever, right? You can easily do this on the stove top, and that's kind of one of my other points is, you can do this on the stove top, but I find that with the stove top, there's a lot of adjustments. You have to turn it up, turn it down. If you do it in the oven, it's a good solid heat the whole time, and that's what I want. So, came to a simmer, I can shut it off now, I can put my lid on, my oven's at 350, and I'm gonna go throw it in the oven. The shanks have been in the oven for about two hours. Let's check them out. Ooh, look at that. I did turn them over once so the tops wouldn't get dry. All right, so what I'm looking for is that the meat doesn't necessarily fall off the bone, right? Whenever you do a braise, you don't want it to fall off the bone, but you want it to have a little bit of tug to it, and I think that we're pretty much perfect here. One thing about braises is I always find that they're better the next day. If you just take this and chill it down and let it rest, and the next day heat it up, I always find it a little bit better. All right, let's get one of these out. Put in your bowl. Now, like I said earlier, this lends itself to a lot of different flavors, a lot of different uh, like iterations you can do on it. Um, normally, I would probably serve this with like a mashed potato, or you can do a polenta. There's so many different things you can do with this. I have my Star Wars tasting spoon. I'm gonna taste the sauce before I put it on top. Oh, perfect. It's really good. The texture's really good. The flavor's really good. I'm gonna get a few of our carrots. Place them around. Look at the, the sauce. It's not super thick, but it has some body to it. If you have any pieces of onions, you can throw some pieces of onions on there too. Just put it over the top. Uh, if you don't use something like a mashed potato or a polenta for this, I suggest um, maybe a nice loaf of bread with butter. All right, everyone, it's time to taste. Now, a couple of things about lamb shanks, or at least braised items, is you don't want them to be falling off the bone, right? Falling off the bone means they're overcooked. You need them to be fork tender. So when you put a fork in them, there's a little bit of give and you can pull it apart. That's what you want. If it's falling off the bone, it's actually kind of dry. So I'm gonna take this little piece. Mm. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> Um, it is great. It has a great lamb flavor. It is not overpowering. Um, the sauce is delicious. You don't taste anchovies. It's just really lamb. Oh, man. Great dinner. Um, if you eat one of these with, uh, like, some sort of side, a starchy side or a loaf of bread, great dinner that night. Mm. Wonderful. Another thing that I love about lamb shanks is that they are great for leftovers. Um, I've made sandwiches like a lavash wrap, you get lavash bread, hummus, tzatziki, a little bit of salad and some warm lamb in there. Um, you can shred it, put it in pasta with some of this sauce, a little pasta, some pecorino romano on it. Um, it just makes great leftovers too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We have merch down in the description. Uh, we also have a P.O. box down there. I'd like to thank my Patreon patrons for supporting us. Thank you so much. And that's it. That's my braised lamb shank. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a great one.